Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chasis Sim Technologies. Welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. What I'm going to be talking to you about in this uh, latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner is electric powertrains and motorsport part one. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to be splitting this presentation up about electric powertrains into two parts. The reason I'm doing that is that not necessarily that electric powertrains are incredibly hard. There's just that there's a lot of material that we've got to go over. So rather than trying give it giving it to giving it all to you in one hit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into bite-sized chunks so you can absorb those, go off and apply them. And once you've applied them, you can come back and we can um, carry on this discussion a little bit further. Now, in terms of what we're going to be talking to uh, talking to about today, look, bottom line, electric powertrains is now a reality. It's coming. And particularly with the first round of Formula E in Beijing, you'd be an idiot not to ignore it anymore. It's as simple as that. Now, the purpose of our discussion today is to get you familiarized with the basics. In particular, what I'm going to talk to you about is understanding cells and packs. I'm going to talk to you about um, understanding an electric motor, what to look for, and we're going to go over some basic hand calcs to get you on your way. Now, one of the great myths about electric power and electric powertrains is that you need about five degrees in electrical engineering to understand it, and you need about another 10 degrees of mechatronics to apply it. Well, I can tell you right now, that's complete rubbish. I've been flying radio-controlled electric-powered aircraft for well over 20 years. If anything, this presentation I'm giving you today has pretty much been born of the backbone of the requests of a lot of customers because we've just implemented electric powertrains into um, the chassis sim. And I can tell you right now, without the combination of their experience and the fact that I've been screwing around with RC electrics for so long, I would have been completely lost on this project. But the key to understanding, the first step in understanding electric powertrains is to, is to understand that an electric powertrain can be represented by this very simple circuit diagram right here, which is basically a battery pack and a motor. So it's effectively a resistor in, uh, it's a resistor hooked up to a battery pack. That's all it is. Now, in terms of understand, in terms of being able to quantify this, a couple of key equations to understand. Voltage is current times resistance. Power is voltage times current. That's it. If you can understand those two things, you are well on your way to truly starting to get your head around what you're going to need out of an electric powertrain. To show an example of this, I'm going to show you a little technique that was um, introduced to me by actually my first flight instructor, but it's actually gone on to proven to be a really effective tool for getting a quick spec in terms of what you need in terms of spec getting a real base spec for what you need for an electric powertrain. So let's just say that we're running a free cell pack hooked up to an electric motor um, using a free S battery. Now, the particular example I'm presenting here is a typical 3D air, uh, 1.4 kilo, 48 inch or 1.2 meter um, uh, 3D setup um, uh, running a um, uh, running a 13 by 6.5 um, prop drawing about 30 amps. So what we need to do is calculate the resistance of the motor. So that's simply V on I. So a free cell pack that's going to draw about 10 volts divided by the current draw, which is 30 amps. And that's about 0.33 of an ohm. Now, let's explore what's going to happen if I add an extra cell to this. So if I add an extra cell, I'm going to be going from a drawing about 10 volts to drawing about 14 volts under load. So my power is going to be given to me by V squared on R, which is going to be about 594 watts. And the current draw is going to be 14 volts divided by 0.33, which is about 42.4 amps. Now, just for the record, one of the planes I fly is actually a four cell uh, is actually a four cell elect, uh, uh, is a four cell electric, swinging a slightly smaller prop, a 12 by 6 prop, and I'm drawing about 40 amps, punching out about 550 prop watts. Now, at first ex at first pass, this might seem like a little bit of a Mickey Mouse example. But what it does is it actually illustrates a really powerful technique for you to be able to start putting some numbers straight away to an electric uh, uh, to an electric powertrain application. Now, in order to understand electric propulsion, there are two really critical elements you need to understand. The first critical element is your lithium polymer cells. Now, the reason I say lithium polymer cells is that's pretty much the backbone. If you're gonna if you're serious about drawing any sort of performance 
lipos are the way to go. Do not even think about nickel metal hydride. Do not even think about uh, uh, do not even think about NICADs. They, in terms of serious performance, they in terms of energy density, the amount of current you can draw, they belong in a museum. Lipos is pretty much where it's at. Now, here's the key to understand how to read a lipo curve. You'll see here that the horizontal graph is discharge capacity. That's a measure. It's basically it's a measure of current times time, which is termed ampere hours. Now, what that does is that basically plots out the capacity of the battery. The vertical axis here is voltage. Um, that pretty much as you um, as you draw out more current from the battery, that's going to drop. Now, as you can see here, there are various col colors for the amount of uh, for the um, uh, for the amount of current you're drawing from the battery, and that's actually uh, termed as a C rating. Now, as you can see, the uh, the smaller the C, uh, uh, the smaller the C rating, the less the the current drops off. As we really crank it up, say to 10 C, you can see here that it drops off, levels off. Then, as we start to discharge, pretty much it falls off a cliff. Now, here's the thing about a really good how to read one of these uh, how to read one of these curves. What you want is that the perfect lipo there's a perfect lipo cell, pretty much has your initial kick around about the uh, around about the 4 4.2 volt cells and in a perfect world that actually stays there's a little bit of a drop off but then it stays absolutely dead flat till you get about 80 85% then it drops off then it starts to drop off that is the perfect lipo cell now a couple of words of uh, caution about lipos lipos give you great energy density for god's sake there are a couple of don'ts that you do not under any circumstances do with lipos. Number one, you don't puncture the cells. You do that, you are playing with fire. Simple as that. Number two, the other thing, you never discharge a lipo cell down to 100% capacity. At, uh, you always take a lipo to 80, 85%. If you go beyond that, you're playing with fire. It's as simple as that. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, I have learned that lesson the hard way. So there's no need for you to repeat my, uh, uh, to, for you to repeat my screw-ups. Now, what uh, obviously, in terms of what we'll put together, for um, a battery pack, it's not it's not consistent of one lipo cell. It's consisted of many, and here's the lingo we have how to understand it. Typically, when we specify a lipo pack, we start off by saying the number of series in S and the number of parallel. So the number of series is how many packs you've got concatenated together. The number of parallel uh, number of parallel packs is for those individual battery packs, how many of those you have in parallel. The number of series determines how much voltage you get. The number of parallel determines capacity. That's a good rough rule of thumb. Now, as you can see here in our um, equations, you calculate the voltage of the pack by taking the number of series multiplied by the voltage number of the cell. The capacity of the pack is um, uh, uh, the uh, the capacity of the pack is going to be the um, the capacity of the pack is the number of cells you got in parallel multiplied by um, the capacity rating of um, uh, the cell. The other thing too that I just want to touch upon very briefly with your lipo cell when selecting a lipo cell, without question, you go for the highest C rating you can buy or is available. Do not collect Go. You do not collect $200 without first, um, uh, uh, without first understanding that.